Okay guys, here we are, day two. It's fucking leaky ass valve. Drain the hot water tank here. Then go back outside, pull out that anode, drain the tank, and then pull this assembly back apart and work on this intro video. Side and pop out that anode and the plug and drain the tank. I'm going to open the valve inside here to the water. This will let off any pressure that's in the system. Essentially, it'll be a vent to drain the tank so it has a way for the air to come in. Let's uh, pop in here to our water heater and drain the sucker. Okay. Uh, the water tank is now draining and we're back inside. You can hear the water. You can hear the water draining. So we have ways to go. Once that water's done draining, I'll disconnect this assembly. We'll pull it out and we'll start replacing some of these leaking, I don't know, these leaking elbows here, these 90 degree elbow fittings. Okay, so I went to Lowe's and I picked up some of these uh, half inch NPT by half inch uh, NPT, uh, essentially just, just a union. Uh, it's just, just uh, male threads on both sides. And what I'm thinking with this, I can use this guy here, and then I have this PEX adapter, half inch NPT. By the way, NPT is just national pipe thread. That's all it stands for. The half inch MT, so here we go. Here's here's the, the, uni the coupler, and here's the this is a shark bite, half inch by half inch FNPT. So anyways, here's the, the fitting I have to go into the ball valve and here's the PEX adapter. They didn't make a, what I wanted to get essentially was like these guys, is this, this half inch NPT pipe thread, you know, size uh, uh, threading right to a 90 degree elbow to the PEX. Uh, I was hoping to find something that lows similar, but I couldn't. I, I found this guy going to this. And now the problem is we're not doing a 90 degree turn, so I'll have to you do a 90 degree turn with PEX pipe. So we put this together here, this will go into the ball valve, and then on the PEX pipe, I can then get something like this to do a 90 degree turn with the PEX. So it's not quite exactly what I wanted, but uh, I can tell you that I just did a, ch a test. This this uh, this new coupler here I bought at Lowe's going into this ball valve is a much, much more snug feel. It goes in there and there's just not any flop to it. Yeah, it goes in there and it's tight. Uh, this guy here, I'll show you. Let me unscrew this one. These are the Amazon elbows I bought. You see how much flop there is there. And th that's just how imprecise the threads are on the Amazon uh, elbow. Anyways, not trying to, to, to push Lowe's or anything like that, but uh, the fittings from Lowe's are substantially tighter. I mean, this, it goes in there and there's no flop to it at all. So that's what I'm after. That's what's gonna give us a nice, you know, watertight seal, even at pressure. The problem, that little, little bit of flop we had in there it was enough flop that that even though I, I put a, a crap ton of Teflon tape on this thing, so the guy at the plumbing store, oh yeah, put Teflon tape on there. And so I did that, <clears throat> I had to put a bunch of it on there to make it firm and tight, but even that wasn't enough. And I'm actually kind of glad that it failed now, because I can imagine if I get out in the middle of the woods somewhere and that were to fail, and now you have a leaky valve and no way to go get you know parts for it. So I'm happy it failed while I'm doing this project. Uh, I'm gonna scrap these guys and throw these away, or, or I guess I'll return them if I can. Ten dollar lesson uh, to to not use crappy parts and make sure that you have a good tight fitting. So in this case, I do. I, this is tight. I'm confident that this also will be a good tight fitting. Just just you know, put on there. You, you can just feel there's no flop to it. But now the workaround is that we're getting further out. Here's the original ball valve. I'm I'm trying to to mimic, and you can see that. Unfortunately, by the time I get the PEX pipe on here in an elbow, we, we really need to come down and go straight over this way. So I'm going to come down and have to kind of do a workaround to get it to line up there. 
This is a, a diesel pusher motorhome, so the engine's back here in the bedroom. So there's a lot of vibrations back here, you know. And so this 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 area is going to be exposed to a lot of shimmies and shakes and whatnot. So this needs to be a you know a very trustworthy connection. I'm happy though we're on the right track. Uh, we got good connections, and that's that's going to put us a big step forward to making this thing work and be watertight. There's a lady in the front of the RV. No, I'm waiting on you to quit so I can come back there. Hey, lady, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to video over here. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to make a video. I'm trying to make a video. Of some mermaid walks what? in. Mermaid. Or, or I guess the mermaid doesn't it's walk. It's RV, RV Reno day. <laughs> Jenny's doing the bathroom. I'm doing the plumbing. And then when this is done, I have to go out. We've got a fuel leak on the generator. So all kinds of crap <laughs> going on today. But one thing at a time. And there's a hurricane coming. Oh yeah, there's also Hurricane Dorian about to hit Florida. We were actually in Central Florida right where the hurricane's about to hit. So we're getting all these little <laughs> items done. So if we do need to evacuate, we can. <laughs> this is so much better. I put like maybe 10, 15 wraps of Teflon tape on these crappy Amazon uh, fittings. And uh, even that was just making it tight, but not a whole lot tighter. And on this guy, I've just got a, a two or three wraps. So, <laughs> so much better. I have a, a little tip for those of you that uh, haven't done much of this before. Um, if you put the Teflon tape on one direction, uh, it'll it'll screw in well. And if you put it on the other direction, as you screw it in, it'll it'll kind of come undone, kind of like peel off. So you want to apply the Teflon tape in the same direction as you're going to be screwing in the fitting. And like in this case, like that. And I'll show you. It's always kind of confusing which way to do it. So what I do is I put the Teflon tape like that, just gonna lay it over there, and just pretend that I'm screwing this righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, so righty-tighty, pretend I'm screwing this into the, the ball valve or whatever you're going into. And this is, this is a nice easy way to make sure you're laying the Teflon tape uh, the, the best direction so it's not gonna come like peeled loose. In the end, it probably doesn't matter if you uh, do it the other direction. It, most of the Teflon tape will probably stay there, but by doing it that way, when I go now to screw this in, you know, it's going the same direction as the tape's laid down, so it's not going to peel it off. For those of you just tuning in, I'm using Teflon tape over pipe dope, because Teflon tape is less likely to give any kind of flavor or taste to the water. This is just uh, going to the sink in the shower for the hot water supply, but there is a chance that we could drink that water and, uh, you know, if we were to drink it and this water were to go across that that liquid plumber's putty you don't have it here they show you but uh anyways it's more of a paste and that stuff could give some flavor to the water and one other thing to mention this valve is a lead free valve uh, because this is potentially drinking water and you want to check when you buy valves or fittings to make sure that they're lead free and that they are designed for potable or drinking water Okay, I've got my fittings all wrapped in Teflon tape for a good seal. Let's, put, so let's uh, go ahead and screw these into the ball valve, and then we'll screw on the PEX pipe adapters. This is a, just for those of you wondering, this is a half inch ball valve. It's a three-way ball valve, half inch NPT unions, and then half inch NPT to half inch PEX. I'll put all this information in the description, but uh, you know, the, the, the same thing will apply if you have a three quarter inch valve or a quarter inch valve or whatever, different sizes and shapes, but all, all these same things will apply you know, in general for your plumbing needs. I have some proper size wrenches as well as pipe wrenches outside, but these guys are doing just fine so far for tightening everything. Again, this the, the, the working pressure in the RV is about 40 to 50 PSI, I think with a maximum of 80 PSI. So, not doing anything super high pressure here. And uh, this tightness will be just fine. Hey right, guys, so I've got the new uh, plumbing assembly put together here. It's not pretty, but I'm confident this will be watertight. Everything here is sealed well and uh, we got the PEX crimps on here. Here's the old one, just so you can see. Um, this is our three-way valve. 
These are common in RVs because uh, when you're going to winterize your RV, you need to be able to drain the system and purge it in certain ways. So they very often will have a three-way valve. Uh, I did some research. A lot of them are plastic now, so if yours doesn't look like this, don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be. This is brass. It's a nice, robust valve that will last a long time. But uh, if it's plastic, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but essentially, three-way valve. This is half-inch PEX pipe. Here's what I have put together. Um, this is, as I mentioned, a lead-free brass three-way valve I found on Amazon. I'll put all the links in the description uh, if you guys need to find one yourself. Uh, the different fittings going on here. And uh, what's most important, they look different. But what I'm after, though, is that each of the connections is in the same exact spot. And that's going to allow this new, new uh, component, this new little piece I built, to bolt right in. Down here, I was able to get away with just using just one elbow and it comes right down. Where this connects down below, you'll see here in a minute, uh, the pipe has a lot of wiggle room and I'm pretty sure this will be good enough. If not, I can pop this off and do this weird contraption here. This one, I had to do this, this weird U-shape here in order to make this line up. Uh, this one, I put the elbow in, but with this being down here, uh, it would come up at an angle and, and where this attaches to, there's no wiggle room. So. Uh, just take that as you will for those of you if you need to do something similar if you have some wiggle room You just you know put a 90 on there and make it work in this case There was not any wiggle room. It had to be precise. So I did three elbows on there to get it up to here uh, Hopefully you can hear me. Okay. I got the fan on because it is hot as a mofo in here, but I'm happy I'm pretty pleased with this. This looks pretty good and uh, I've been using pecs for a while now and although I have a lot of joint, everywhere there's a crimp, that's a potential leak spot. And uh, I'm confident though that, that this will be watertight. I've used PEX for a while, and I found that as long as you get a good solid crimp on there, you know, as long as the pipe's in good shape and your fittings are good, you're gonna be fine. The, the big thing here, my biggest problem as you saw, was this dadgum valve and those, those old connections. Where are they at? These guys, this is the, this is the the made in China ones from Amazon.com, and uh, I don't know. I, I was excited because you know it, it's the PEX and the elbow and the adapter all into one. It was a lot simpler, but unfortunately the tolerance on those threads was too loose. Um, you'll also see one thing I did change: the old pipe comes out of here and goes this way uh, because of how tall or, or because of these because of the pieces I had. I just went straight up. To this pipe here it really doesn't matter it's just joining this this line here whether it joins there or joins over here doesn't matter but yeah so there you go there's the there's the, the new one here's the old one you see that they line up pretty good and what's as I mentioned what's important these fittings here are exactly lined up so let's put it in and try this sucker out Do any, any, oh, f fuck, I'm putting on the wrong mother. God. All right, let's try this again. All right, here's our new valve assembly. Let's see if we can get anything to bolt together properly here. All right, these are easy to cross thread, so you want to make sure that it goes on nice and easy. You're not fighting it too much. If you're fighting it, right off the bat, you could have your threads crossed, which would potentially damage the connection. All right, we are now attached, top and bottom. So now I'll go back outside. I will put in the anode back into the hot water tank. To plug the tank, we'll turn the water system back on, fill up the water, and test for leaks once more. Fingers crossed, and I'm pretty confident at this point, uh, the valve's not gonna leak. It's just a matter of making sure the other connections and fittings are all watertight. So now, moment of truth. The hot water heater outside has been plugged up 
inside I've got all my connections made and now we're going to turn on the water pump pressurize the system and see what happens as before I'm going to open up the valves to the sink uh, having these valves open it just gives the air a way to burp out and vent out the air as the water fills the tank and here we go all right once again that air means that we're pushing all the air out of the water tank the water is going into the bottom of the tank as the tank fills the air is coming out here out of the hot water side of the faucet okay so one thing i want to share with you guys while this water tank is filling up for us to test and pressurize it um this uh this work that we, i've done today and yesterday but this work is not that hard of work yes you could definitely hire somebody to do it and if it's cost effective and within your budget by all means you know hire somebody but if you don't have the, the budget for it or if you like doing stuff yourself you know that this is not hard stuff to figure out in fact most of it i learned on youtube and so i'm kind of like paying it forward here i want to share what i've learned with other people all right we're almost here but yeah most of the stuff that i'm doing this is all very basic simple stuff you know we're not talking about super high pressure water so worst case you get a little bit of water in the rv which is dry up and uh best case you fix the dog yourself and you know, you know your system is good to go for your next trip i think we're almost filled up once you hear that bubbling stop that means that all the air has been purged out of the tank I closed off the hot water valve and at this point the hot water tank is filled all the way up that we vented the air out all the way up to the faucet there could be a little bit of air when I go to use the shower later because that's a higher elevation which is no big deal you just we, you know open the valve and the air comes out so nothing to worry about there but essentially we let all the air out and as far as the work we're testing right here we want to test this area to see if it's watertight right now the water pumps kicked off so that means the water pump has reached its maximum pressure setting and kicked out and we're right now just holding pressure so so now the you know now now is the test now is the countdown to see are there any more leaks uh i'm hoping not <laughs> but hey anything's possible so now we're going to monitor this and watch for a while and look for leaks i'd say you know i'm going to be watching this every few minutes i'll look in here and look for any signs of water dripping and uh after a few hours of no drips and then every few hours for the next few days, I'll look in there to ensure that there's no new leaks. Typically within the first, you know, first few minutes or half hour, you're gonna see some water leaking. The system's pressurized. So right now we should see leaks in the next few minutes if there are any. So we'll see what happens here. All right guys, I'm back. This will be our final check for the water leak. Well, actually the first hour I watched the leak very closely to make sure it didn't pop up and then every few hours I checked it. So the first 24 hours was rock solid, no leakage at all. However, sometimes you have a very slow leak which kind of builds slowly. So it's been three days now, we're gonna head over and check out to see if there's any leakage at all. For those of you new to this channel, thank you for dropping in and checking this out. I hope this helps you in some way if you might have an RV with a leak or just wanna know how to fix some 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 you know, valves and how to use PEX pipe. For those of you that are new, to make a long story short, my wife Jenny and my son Tucker and I travel full time in this motorhome. So this is this is our house. We have to make sure that these leaks are fixed and that everything's working you know working well so we can live comfortably. If you'd like to know any more about us and how we travel full time, uh, all that stuff's on our website outsideiscalling.com in the about us section. But more importantly, I'm doing this video hopefully as a way to help others learn how to do PEX pipe, plumbing, as well as how to fix some leaks, work on ball valves, etc. For any of you on the fence about doing your own plumbing, you know, once you get the basic tools, I will say it's, it's pretty forgiving, especially a PEX pipe. If you cut it the wrong size, you just you know cut it and redo it. So it's, it's a pretty easy way to learn how to plumb. Um, once you just learn these basic things, which you just have to just start, get your hands dirty and try it, I think you'll find out that it's not too hard uh, you just have to make sure you measure, measure twice, cut once, and then of course like now at, that the valve's been replaced, I need to monitor it and make sure that it holds water pressure. That first hour or so after you turn water pressure on is probably the most critical. Uh, after that, you can kind of just check it every so often. This is, as I mentioned, this is day three. This will be my last check, and if there's no water today, you know, I'm sure I'll still look at it. I'm OCD like that, but I would say after a third day of no leakage, you're probably just good to go. So let's head over and we're gonna check out this leak and we'll hopefully we're gonna check out and see that there's not a leak. 
get this little thing to pop off. All right, so it's kind of hard to, hard to see in here. So I'm just gonna go by feel for most of this. Turn on the light so you guys can see. Hopefully that's enough. But uh, yeah, just feel around. My hands are currently dry. I'm gonna feel around at each of the each of the joints for any any water. You want to feel every 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 spot you've been at. Feel for any any drops of water. And as you saw in my case, this here, this valve, the body, that there's the three outlets here were my my primary problem. And this thing is nice and dry which is awesome <laughs> oh that's so awesome all right and then the last two down here i gotta check out let's see no water there no water there all right we got a nice dry valve it's been replaced and even better a i saved a bunch of money i didn't have to pay a plumber to do this because a plumber is going to charge you for the material as well as their labor. So, you know, I, I save that much on, on labor as well as typically a service call if you wanna have, you know, a, a, uh, a mobile RV tech come out. And what's even better is like, now that I have fixed this, I have the tools, I have the parts. If there's any other leaks in here, I know exactly where to go and how to fix it in the future. So I'm a huge fan of doing things myself. You know, A, it's cost effective, but B, it just kinda, it's kinda cool. It gives you a sense of, uh, of accomplishment. Here we go, you know, we have this, Brand new valve, all lead free. I'm confident we're probably, probably not gonna drink out of the sink, but if we do drink out of the sink, we're gonna be just fine. You know, everything's safe for my family and uh, we saved some money. That's, that's, that's money we can use to travel more. So for those of you that have been on the fence about doing your own repair or not, if you're watching videos like this to kind of see, you know, how to do it, uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do this. In fact, if any of you guys have any other comments or other, other tips or recommendations, please, by all means, leave those down below in the description. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I've, I've learned most of my stuff through YouTube, and uh, maybe some of you guys might have some other tips as well for, for the, uh, the next group of people that need to fix their valves. I hope this was valuable, and uh, hopefully this helps some of you save money, fix your own stuff, and you know, become uh, more proficient in the process. We have tons more videos on our channel about uh, adventurous family travel. We've been to Panama, down to Baja, Mexico in the RV. Uh, we have a lot more cool places in the future lined up. So so if, if you'd like to, please subscribe to follow along. There's also videos about how we purchased our RV and RV shopping. So we have a lot of great stuff on there that hopefully will have some value for those of you that are new or looking to get into RVing as well as traveling as a family. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.